You're listening to the Nerd Dad Podcast. Oh, Dad, you're embarrassing me again. Hey, what's up, nerds? Uh, listen, this episode is just a chat I had with Chris Machete of Machete Comics and the Kids on the Escalator podcast. Uh, once again, using it mainly from my phone, in fact, all from my phone. Uh, I use an app called Rev, place a little call on your behalf. The uh, the other end receives a message that says, this call is being recorded. Um, and then it's, you're good. You can have your chat and upload it to whatever format you want at the end. Again, another free app. I try to make this as simple as possible. So, what you're about to hear is my chat with Chris Machete of Machete Comics and the Kids in the Escalator podcast. And he's going to be talking about his comic, his debut comic. The Demon Spawn of Skeletron, which is awesome. Check it out. Um, hope you enjoyed the chat, and uh, we'll circle back at the end. All right, everyone. I'm here with Chris Machete of Machete Comics and the Kids on the Escalator podcast. Chris, thanks for coming on, buddy. No problem, Joe. It's good to be here, my friend. So January hits. We release issue one of The Demon Spawn of Skeletron. Mm-hmm. Tell me about it. How's it going so far? It's going well, man. We just have the uh, like the uh, digital copy available right now. Um, I know a lot of the hardcore fans are waiting for the physical copy. Myself as well. We have one coming in the mail that I got to check out, right? So I got to give it an okay, and then uh, we'll get the physical copy out, which is awesome. Uh, I, I, issues two, I'm just finishing off by a couple pages I wanted to redo because uh, just being a stickler, but I had the time, which is great. So issue two will be out right on time. Issue three will be out right on time. We're cruising here. So it's going really well. I, and I love uh, uh, being telling people now that I'm you know, the owner of a comic company. I, that, that is a pretty swell title for a guy like me, for, for a nerd like me, right? <laughs> that, is, that is impressive to say that, you, that you've kind of gone down that road. So, I, I, look, I, I downloaded the, uh, the digital copy because I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. I, I Thanks, read buddy. it. I enjo- of course, I enjoyed it. Um, I ordered it Thank through you. blurb.ca. I want to just yes. let the, the little listeners know. Uh, I think it was four ninety nine. Downloaded it right mm-hmm. to my iPhone. It uploaded nice and seamlessly into my uh, the uh, the books app that was already there. So very easy Beautiful. for the listeners to get their hands on. Um, and I'm curious about this though because mm-hmm. I get the sense it's a it's a passion project. How long have you been sitting on this? Oh man, since the nineties, buddy. Went back when I was actually like going to art school in uh, New Jersey. I went to the Joe Kubert School of Comic Book Art, like basically the only comic book university college in the world, right? It was in New Jersey. Um, so I, 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 yeah, I know, man. And, and the funny thing is that they lost my acceptance letter in the mail. The mail did. So I had to live in the worst part of New Jersey. Everybody in the school felt so bad for me. Like this, this was a, a crack-ridden area, man. You, you were supposed to be in by 10 o'clock. It was, I, I saw some things, Joe. <laughs> I've seen some things. So I've been sitting on this for a long time. And then when I got out of school, of course, I joined a band, and I went on tour for uh, a decade, <laughs> like everybody does when they get out of art school, right? Um, so Naturally. I'm just kind of, yeah, and then uh, from the band thing, um, I, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money, but I was having some fun. That's a whole other podcast right there. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, you know, so, so then I went to teach. Uh, I taught comic book art, and I taught music. And now I've, I've had the time where, uh, you know, I've paid my dues for this, this, this relaxed lifestyle, and now's the time. Now I've gotten my art skills. I've got the time to come back and, and hone them a bit from being a musician for so long. And, uh, yeah, it's time. I'm one of those people that I'm a big Star Wars fan and big Marvel Comics fan, you know, all the, the supernatural stuff. So I, I'm a true believer that the universe tells you when you should do things. You just got to listen, Joe. You know what I mean, my friend? You, you got to just hear it and wait for your you moment. Do. Yeah. So yeah. feel the force. <laughs> So do you, do you know where it's going then? Because the, I, I won't I won't spoil anything, but the the first mm-hmm. issue kind of ends on a, a bit of a cliff. Uh, Big time. Do you know where it's Do you know where it's going? Yeah, I've got fifty issues planned out in my head, and buddy, it doesn't end well for for us because <laughs> this is this is no, modern right. modern day, right? Yeah. So, and, but basically, what happened is, is a cult uh, here in Kingston, Ontario, uh, pulled off something called uh, the Fade to Black. I'm um, Metallica Easter egg. There's Easter eggs all over these, these books that I write. Um, and what it did is it caused 13 days of darkness, days and night of darkness. Now, it created a few heroes, 
but more it just pulled the evil out of everybody. And having it in my backyard here in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, there's so many old buildings that have such great history that I can pull all these old ghosts and demons out of from the 13 days and nights of the fade to black. So I've got such a long story here, man. I've got um, and the cool thing is, is, is being a writer, I, I, one of the villains is a professional wrestler who's not a wrestler anymore, right? His name's uh, El Terrifico, and he has this cult. They, t- they, uh, they take it over the Kingston Penitentiary, and this will be an issue three. And to join the cult, you have to wrestle. So it, 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 it's, it's fun. There's, there's a little bit of dark comedy to what I do in, in the book, and I love that myself. So it, this is, the, the thing is, is I've always wanted to do my own comic, and instead of, like, beating down doors trying to sell it, I've always had the thing... Um, and I tell people just do it yourself, at least once, at least try and do it yourself. Now, mind you, I would love to get Image Comics to pick this up. I do want to sell this story like The Walking Dead eventually down the road. That's what I'm aiming for. I'm putting a lot of layers into these characters. I've learned a lot being an old guy and reading comics all my life. So I really would like this to go the way of The Walking Dead. That's kind of what I'm, I'm imaging this after. And I throw Image in there again because I would love to have Image Comics pick this up. Marvel Comics and DC control what you do. Uh, image Comics is all about the creator. So you can kind of stay an indie comic guy, but have uh, Image put your stuff out there for you, which is a great way to go. And again, as I say, I'm, I'm kind of walking in the steps of The Walking Dead. I kind of want to go through that, that route that, uh, that Kirkman did, and hopefully I can get some success from that. But in the meantime, buddy, I'm having such a good time. Like, I can drink beer and watch uh, Marvel movies while I'm, while, I'm, while I'm working, as I do the air quotes. Quote. So, you know, I've, I've worked hard for this lazy lifestyle, as I say, Joe. It's fun. I'm happy. Guy and I look. I, w- I was doing my research on you. Uh, first mm-hmm. off, to the to the music portion, you can shred. Right. Uh, I was I, 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 I was watching was watching this watching some of those YouTube videos. You can shred. You oh, can thanks. you can you can play, man. That's awesome. And thanks, I, I did I, and again doing my research. I saw yeah? that the influence came from a Kiss concert. Oh, buddy, that, yeah. That, right. that 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 was that was the moment where you're like, I'm gonna shred, and I'll. I'll and, Look, you can see the influence of Kiss even in the comics. Now that I, oh. once I read that, I was like, I get it. I see it. So t- t- talk cool. to me about the music. Yeah, well, when I was about, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was about, oh, boy, five, about six years old, man, we were, we were uh, going through, a, I remember we were in a mall in London, Ontario, White Oaks Mall, and there's this huge stand-up uh, ad for, for the new Kiss album. I think it was Love Gun. It was Love Gun, and I had all the girls in front of him. And, man, I just was hypnotized. And I, I remember I said, my mom will remember this conversation, too. I just pointed. I said, I want that. And she was like, oh, you're going to walk around with the word kiss on, on you? And I thought it said kill. Like I, I was kiss, right? So I thought it said kill, not kiss. And then when she, you're going to walk around with the word kiss on you? And, you know, girls are going to come kiss you. Obviously, my mom was trying to deter me from, from getting into rock and roll at that point, and especially kiss. But, um, no, I had to have it. So um, my parents took me to see kiss. My parents are great, great, great people. Um, they took me to see Kiss, uh, I guess, the next year when I was seven, seven or eight, one or the other. Anyway, buddy, it was Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. I was on the aisle. I stood up through the whole show, knew all the words to everything, rocked out, and uh, Ace Freely, of course, being being into the sci-fi and, and things like that. I discovered Spider-Man and, and Kiss around the same time, maybe Spider-Man a little earlier. But um, Ace Freely, man, his guitar lit up in smoke. You know, they all rose out of the out of the stage. It was just phenomenal for for a kid, and I just soaked it all in. And, and anytime I see that Kiss logo now, it just makes me want to pick up my guitar, buddy. You know, um, and I've, I've had a lot of fun playing guitar. Um, from there, I, I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be a comic book artist. It bounced back and forth. And then when I as I say when I got out of university or college for for drawing, um, I thought, well, you know what? I've been working. And this this college I went to, man, like you had like five hours of homework. They didn't mess around. They made you professionals, which I appreciate now. Um, so I, I got out of school and I'm like, you know what? And Green Day came out and I was like, oh, dude, I can do, I can play guitar and sing like Billy Joe. And the funny thing is, is I, I could, I can, that's, that's what influences me is I, I sounded a lot like him earlier on. So I, I thought, you know, I'll play in a band for a month or, or a couple months. Well, it turned into a decade because we actually did pretty well and had some fun. You know, I got to, uh, we did the Snow Jam tour. I've got to open for bands like, like Goldfinger, like Matthew Good, um, Geez, who else are we? It was all kinds of them that we toured with. Uh, Protest the Hero became great friends with them. Some 41, you know, like we, we partied and had some good times. The only problem is I didn't make a lot of money off of that. So it came to the point where my belly was just getting too big from all the draft beer. You know, you, you show up, you're like, hey, man, where's our food? Well, we can't feed you, but we can give you all the draft beer you want. Whoa, life of a musician, my friend. It was, it was good times. It was good times. But yeah, I'm too old for that now. I don't even like traveling anymore, buddy. 
Joe, you get me in a car, and if we're going for more than half an hour, I'm going to have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, just, funny, I, I used to do stand-up comedy, and, and I, I can appreciate the idea of, hey, you're here, we can't pay you, but how about a few drinks? And you're like, oh, all right. <laughs> I guess I'll get my. It seems like a way. good idea. It seems like a good idea at the beginning of the night, right? And then the next day, you're like, "Oh, jeez, what am I doing?" Or, or, or a few minutes later, you're like, "I gotta perform. I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get up get, there." You feel like you're way a ton, right? Yeah, and a couple times your show, like our shows, would get delayed. I remember one time we were opening for the band Sandbox, and Bubbles, if people don't know this, was in a band called Sandbox. He was the bass player, I believe. And our show kept getting delayed, and we were hanging out with the guys in Sandbox, and he was doing bubbles. And this was way before Trailer Park Boys hit. He was doing a rough – he was just making us laugh. And, man, you know when you're talking to people and you're having a good time, drinks go down pretty quick, eh, Joe? So yep. by the time we hit the stage, buddy, oh, man, I, the only thing I remember, I, I had the cord wrapped around me. I thought it was just one of the worst shows ever. But it's funny, though, because bubbles – that was one of the first appearances of bubbles, and, and we, we were all privy to it. So there's so many small things that, that we did on tour that was fun. But, man, it's just the bad outweighed the good near the end there, and I got too old for it. It's, it's a young guy's life if you're doing it as a punk rock starting out way. Once you get to the, the good stuff, you know, touring in a nice big bus, that's probably fun. But we had five guys in a van, and it sucked. Yeah, it, it wears on you. I, I'm going to tie this back here for you. Because when you initially mm-hmm. said that the, uh, the Skeletron's going to have some influences of a professional wrestling, I'm not going to lie. I thought of the Green Bastard. I thought of the Green oh, Bastard. Oh, nice. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey. And, and I was like, I was like, because I, I don't know you that well, so I'm like, I don't know if he's gonna yeah. catch that. I'm sure he will, but I laid off oh, the reference, sure. and then you bring up bubbles, and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, the wrestling cult is it's just so much fun, dude. He's got like like the the the, the big guy there, El Terrifico, and he he does this uh, he does like a, a podcast as well where he talks like. The Ultimate Warrior, where the Ultimate Warrior lost his mind, and was talking all crazy. So he has a podcast, so he's trying to bring people into his wrestling cult, right? Um, and he's up to no good. I don't want to let let uh, the readers know what he's up to. But again, I, one thing I, I, I'm striving for is having like a, a huge storyline um, and having cliffhangers all the time. So you got to read. You know, you got, I always love that book, uh, classic X Men books is uh, when John Byrne and Claremont did their run. Every, every issue was like a cliffhanger with an epilogue that you wanted to read on. So I'm going to try and keep that going, as well as all the little Easter eggs in there. I have uh, some, like shiny, the Shining uh, Easter egg in there and Metallica and some other stuff. So it's, it's a and, fun read, I think. And, and there was definitely a shot at Montreal Canadian fans in the first issue. <laughs> there's, there's I, shot did. There. I did. <laughs> I did. couldn't resist, I had to, could I, you? No, I drew a uh, no, Leaf fan through and through, and, I'm get, and tomorrow night we get to see the two teams play, which will be great. Um, but yeah, I had to throw the Habs, the, the Habs uh, jab in there, for sure. Well, I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate your time today. Tell, tell, tell everyone where they can find you online. Okay, well, basically, I think I'm the only prominent Chris Machete out there. So if you put Chris Machete in Google, you're going to find my guitar lessons, my art lessons, my Instagram, my Twitter um, my YouTube channel with all like my, my you probably you probably uh, saw that my YouTube channel for music lessons does pretty well. Like I've gotten yep. like seventy thousand views on some of them. Right. The funny thing is, is now I'm tired. I like I taught music so much that now I just want to do comic books and everybody's still you know I'm, I'm getting there. But man, the music stuff does really really well. So basically, if you just put in Christmas Shetty, buddy, you're gonna find all kinds of stuff. We are on uh, Patreon now though. If you go to Patreon, what's it one dot um, Patreon dot com and just put in Machete Comics you're going to find you can join my Patreon now. So that's brand new as well, buddy. So I got, um, you can go on there and you can just become a member and, and check out some hidden videos I have. Um, or you can become a member and get a comic book or you can become a member and become a comic book and a poster. So I've got more awesome. things on the go, man. Yeah, and my, my wife is like my management team here. Lonnie takes care of everything. And the kids on the Escalator show, right? Like she does all the producing and stuff. So I'm lucky that I have a wife that not only enjoys watching The Walking Dead with me in Spider-Man movies, but she also helps me, so... Big help, man. Big help there. I can do with that, that's for sure. Behind every successful man is a strong woman. <laughs> you got it, buddy. You got it. She is a strong woman. She puts up all my crap, and I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate your time today, buddy. We'll, uh, we'll talk again. We'll do this again next month. You bet, dude. I, see, I talk so much, buddy. We, we could do a part one and part two sometime. <laughs> I, think, I think I like the sound of that, man. I can, I, can, I can pump out two episodes in a month or in a week, one week with you. <laughs> for sure you could, buddy. For sure you could. We'll get you back on the kids in the escalator as well. Awesome, man. We'll talk. Take care. Thanks, Joe. Take care. 
Hey, hope you enjoyed the chat. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Chris has got some stories. You can just tell. Uh, so we'll have him back on again in the future. And, uh, you know, if you enjoyed this, hit subscribe or subscribe or subscribe or subscribe. I don't know. Um, follow me on all my socials at that nerd dad, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm most, I'm most active on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and you can always find me on the Dean Blundell.com. Uh, I write blog posts for them. I do a little of their social media as well. So we have some fun. I look forward to doing more of these.